Hey guys, and welcome back to another Relative Shenanigans video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play Clue FX. Let's do it. To start the game, set up the board and unscrew the back of this, this part. Put two AA alkaline batteries, are recommended, inside here. And then line up the plus and minuses like you normally would for other games. Screw it back in or put the screw back in and tighten it and then you're ready for the story and setup of the game. Okay, so let me move the board more. There you go. And here's the story of the game. And I'll let you read along if you want to. Mr. John Bodie, I'm pretty sure it's Bodie, nephew of the late Sir Hugh Black, was hosting an afternoon garden party at Tudor Mansion for all of his uncle's colorful associates. During the party, Miles Meadowbrook, John Bodie's lawyer, pulled Bodie aside for a private meeting to discuss some concerns he had regarding some of the details of Sir, details of Sir Hugh's will. After his meeting, Mr. Meadowbrook has seen, was seen leaving the mansion, heading back toward the garden. Sometime later, he was found dead. His body had obviously been moved from somewhere else on the grounds. Objective. Miss Meadowbrook, apparently the victim of foul play, is found on the grounds of Tudor Mansion. To win, you must find Inspector Brown and give him the answers to the following questions. Who did it? Where? And with what weapon? Okay. So here's the first assembly. You've got to remove all the plastic pieces from the bags, discard the bags, punch out the cardboard pieces from the parts sheet, discard the cardboard waste, and then you attach the clips to the boards that you're playing with. So, an example would be, I'm only going to do two since we're playing with two people. We're playing with gray and we're playing with blue. Usually you do all of them, but we're not playing with that many, so it's not needed. Put the rest back in the box. And the other clips as well. Then grab the matching player token of that character. You can see the reference in the instructions. Here's your reference. Sorry. It's right there. Right here. These are the characters. Prince Azure, Lady Lavender, Lord Grey, and Miss Peach. You may notice that I might be, or that I'm saying the instructions in the wrong order, but it doesn't really matter how uh, the setup works as long as you set it up right. So then grab all your cards and, sorry, not yet, we'll get to that. So then you want to find the background of it, this thing. You want to find these two pieces and you put this cardboard in there, just like this. I'm going to show you. This piece goes right in here and then it goes onto here. You can set it up however you want, as long as it works in the end for the game. Then, this piece, this piece right here, goes in this gap. I don't like setting it up this way, but I'll set it up just for you guys. This way. That goes in there. Set this inside. And then, you're going to put this... Let me see. Yeah, you're going to put this in there. And then you're going to you're going to attach the roof to it, and you're also going to attach like the tower thing. You put them in. You put this in. Put these pieces, these little poke, these little poles, into the matching space, into the matching places of there, and you should be able to form the roof. Just try and fit it in. Fit it in there. There we go. And then you put this piece on. This part should be on the bottom. This part should be on the top. Put that in there, doing the same thing, putting this piece and this piece in the corresponding. And then you finally place it onto the board. Hopefully this works. This is, there we go. Okay, so then you can move that down if it needs to be. And then we go to the next step. By the way, I was mistaken. It does tell you to unfold the game board and place it. 
It doesn't tell you to place it, but it says unfold the game board. So it would most likely, in their case, be like this. So then you unfold it, place that on there, just like I did in the last step. And then you're going to grab all your cards, and you're going to put them in case of suspects, locations, and weapons. And just a reference for you guys, there should be nine locations, nine location cards. There should be, uh, there should be six suspects, I'm pretty sure, let me see, seven, eight suspects, and there should be six weapons. So then, put them all face down. You're going to need your confidential envelope here. You're going to shuffle these cards. Whoops, sorry. Shuffle the cards. This pile, perfect. This one too. I know my shuffle's not the best, it doesn't matter though. I mean, if they're all different, the shuffle doesn't matter. But if some of them are the same, then it kind of does. So then what you're going to do is you're going to open your confidential folder like this. And I would recommend putting it like this. Grab one from each, slide it in there secretly. Then you're going to place this to the side somewhere. Or if you want to play like normal Clue would recommend, put it in the middle with the logo. Then you're going to grab all your cards and shuffle these together. And what you should get is all of the cards shuffled together. So yeah, shuffle the weapons, the locations, and the remaining suspects into their own deck. Grab the eight folders of the characters. And one by one, you are going to grab one card and slide it inside the folder. Make sure to remember which way they are, otherwise you might expose it to the other person. Doesn't matter which order you do it, doesn't matter which order they're in, just do that and you'll be good. Do that for all of these steps. Okay, next person. Almost done. Then we got Miss Peacock. Then the next one is Rusty. I'm going to put four on each side. Then Colonel Mustard, and then Miss White. There you go, now that you've set up that, uh, deal the remaining cards to the players based on how many you're playing with. So if you're playing with two, you should probably have six cards, I'm pretty sure. Four, five, and six. So then, you're going to need to Okay, apparently they're really specific. They say to deal it clockwise to each player around the table. Never knew they told you to do that. But yep, that's dividing the cards. If you don't get what I'm saying, then you can look at this little reference. Step one, step two, step three. Okay, now each player chooses their own character and places them on their start space. And by the way, this game's going to be loud, so I hope your ears can brace for it. Um, then, uh, you're going to secretly look at your cards because they're in your hand. They can't be in the case file envelope. This means none of your cards was involved in the crime. So, an example. Look. I have the tennis racket, which means this is not involved, nor neither is this, 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 or this. And the other one has different cards that they know are not involved in the crime. If you played Clue before, in the description I'll leave some timestamps based off people who have played Clue and people who haven't played Clue. Basically the differences between the two games and instructions. Okay. So then you're going to take a sheet from this thing. They're not double-sided, sadly. I'm going to take a sheet each. Put it away. And you're each going to put these in your folder. Remember, an important thing, 
when you're putting the clip on there, use the bottom part. See the bottom part right there, that, this part? Just put that part in to the, into the folder. And then with the top part, you're going to clip this in. I'm going to try and clip it in. I got this. Okay, there we go. That's clipped in. And then do that for the other person. They clip in their own into their folder. Why are these so hard to clip in all of a sudden? It's so annoying. Okay. Um, oh, I'm not even clipping it in the right place. Okay, now it should clip in. Perfect. And you close it. And now, on your own, look at your cards and mark them based off what you have. What they recommend is writing the initials of the player who has it. So my name's Caleb, if you didn't already know. So let's say... Yeah, I have the tennis racket. So also you're going to need pencils. Another part of the setup, you're gonna need pencils for each player. Okay, so once again, I have the tennis racket and my name's Caleb. You can either do your initial, you can do like an X, a check mark, whatever, whatever suits you. But since I have the tennis racket, we're gonna go here. I'm gonna go right here. And I'm gonna write a C right there. So now I know I have the tennis racket, even though I already have cards, and it's not involved in the crime. So write down all the cards you have on your full or on your paper in your folder, and then come back. Now you might get a little confused on this list because there's two boxes. So this is if you've seen them. So let's say I saw Miss Meadowbrook's folder, then I would mark the scene circle right there with however I'd like, which means I've seen her and I don't need to see her again. <laughs> okay. And this box is if you know if you've seen it. So yeah, see? Boathouse. I've seen the boathouse, so I wrote C on there. And now, I'm going to read this. You can read along. This is Inspector Brown. Early in the game, Inspector Brown will appear on the scene. It's important to keep track of his whereabouts because you will need to find him when you, you've solved the crime and are ready to make your final accusation. You are helping Inspector Brown investigate the murder at Tudor Mansion, the eight suspects, those ones, Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum, Miss White, Miss Scarlet, Miss Peacock, Mr. Green, Miss Meadowbrook, and Rusty are currently wandering about the grounds. These are login spaces. So all of these, this, this, that, 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 that one, that one, that one, that one, those are all login spaces. And these are location names, like this one is the gatehouse. You can look at your own board for reference, because I hope you have the board, otherwise it's going to be really hard to play this game. But look at your own board for reference, these are like the names, just like right there, okay. Each of them holds a clue that you will need to know in order to solve this mystery. Where will you start your search? Maybe you can find Colonel Mustard hiding in the stable. What might Miss Scarlet be up to at the boathouse? And why would Professor Plum be raiding at the gatehouse? Before you begin your investigation, take a quick look around the grounds and take note of the locations where these suspects might be hiding. I don't know how you're supposed to know that. <laughs> the shrubs. So if you don't already know, it says here, but it also says on there what each of them do. So the first shrub does is done, second sh shrub is search, third is repeat, fourth is final, fifth is yes, sixth is no, and seventh is waiting. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to get to the first steps. Turn the game on by sliding the on and off switch located on the back of the two-door mansion base to the on position. The narrator, Mr. Ash, I never even knew his name who is John, Body, John Bodie's butler, will ask which guests are playing. Respond by pressing the shrub from the two-door mansion. Mark yes or the one marked no after you answer to all four guests. The narrator will welcome you all to two-door mansion. Example, is Lord Grey playing? Press yes. Is Lady Lavender playing? No. If Miss Pe is Mitch Pe Miss Peach playing? Press yes. Is Prince Azure playing? Press yes. Ah, Lord Grey, Miss Peach, and Prince Azure, welcome to two-door mansion. Okay, these are the start spaces. You can, I'm oh, sorry, now place your pawns on their start spaces. Okay, so now do it. 
Okay. Detective Note, you may also start the game by simply placing your pawn directly on its matching start space and pressing it down. Here's what you do on your turn. You move, search or make a suggestion, or and make a final accusation. When your guest's name is called out, it's your turn. Detective's Note, each guest is called out once during a round, but the order in which he she is called is random, and will vary from round to round. In a two-player game, players will always alternate turns. Okay, so here's an example of doing that. Turn the switch on, on the back. If it's off, turn Welcome it on. Welcome to QFX. Please choose your characters. So you can either press down or you can wait for it to ask. Is Lord Grey playing? So then you click yes, because he is. So nice of you to come. Lord Grey. Is Lady Lavender playing? She's right here, but she's not playing, so we press no. Is She's right here, she's not playing, so no. Is Prince Azure playing? He's right here, and he's on there, so yes. Glad you could join us. Prince Azure. Ah, Lord Grey and Prince Azure. Welcome to Tudor Mansion. Please place your characters on their start spaces. Lord Grey, your turn. Okay, so now it tells you that Lord Grey can go first. So they might look at their little reference thing. They don't have many locations. So they're going to go to the gazebo and they're going to click it. So to enter a location, you must place your character on there and push down. Oh, it's You see Professor Plum and Rusty at the gazebo. No, it's fascinating to see you. So when you encounter a suspect or find the inspector, we'll talk about that later, Remember that each suspect has a clue to the crime. Throughout the game, you'll want to question as many of the eight suspects, all of those, as possible so you can learn what information they hold. This will help you put together clues so you can make your final accusation. By the way, I'll put this here since it's probably going to screw it up by talking. Detective note, the eight suspects and the inspector are constantly moving around the grounds of Tudor Mansion. Sometimes you will be told where they move to and from. But sometimes they may sneak by you, keep your ears open, and listen to their whereabouts. Listen for their whereabouts. When you enter a location that has one or more suspects in it, the narrator will announce who is there. So if you didn't catch what they said, click the repeat shrub. It's because I didn't. Okay. So you grab these. You grab these two folders for yourself. And now you can either search, it will either say you found someone, which means you get to grab another, or it will say you found no one. So your goal for now is you're trying to get your eight suspects, this is what I recommend, get eight suspects and then start asking people because otherwise you wouldn't really know because someone else could have it. So you want to question all eight before you start making a suggestion. It's the same rules as normal clue. So we're going to search, suppress the search shrub, search and, and Mrs. so I found Mrs. Miss Meadowbrook. So I found three in one already. He left the gazebo. Your, your so in the game, they can only move one space. So they're in the, the gazebo, so they move now. They can either go to the gar garage, stable, and that's it. They can only go there, I guess. I mean, it's possible they can go here, but I don't know for sure. So then Prince Azure Prince is Azure, going to... Please move. Then Prince Azure is going to move. We're just going to move him. You can go to the same location as the other character. But why would they want to do that? They want to... They're going to go to the stable. So they saw Mr. Green. They saw Mr. Green, but they also saw Professor Plum. But I'll give you an example. Since I, since both people are gonna see this one, what you do when you find someone is you open their envelope, look inside, and then you're going to mark it. So they had the long gnome. So what you're going to do here is if you, for the initials under long gnome, right here, you're gonna write P and P. There we go. Now you know Professor Plum has it. And then you're going to cross off Professor Plum. Or check mark, whatever you want. So now you know you've seen them. 
Same for Rusty and Miss Meadowbrook. I'll show you those later. And that's the same thing for Mr. Green as well. They're going to search. To search and find Mrs. White rummaging. So they found them as well. Oh, don't sneak up on people. The inspector has entered. The inspector has just mm -hmm. arrived. He is currently at the garden. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will be thoroughly searching the grounds. Please find me if you have any clues regarding the Meadowbrook mystery. Mrs. White has left the stable. Oh, I must be off now. Lord Grey, your turn. So yeah, when you search, whoever you find, or if you find no one, you grab the folder and write down the information. Once you've done that, you can you can also make a suggestion, which is like this. So let's Lord say, Gray, please move. I'm gonna move to the, I'm gonna move to the boathouse. There are no suspects at the boathouse. Let's pretend I don't need to search. Then also you'd return these back if you were playing. So you'd return these back after you've done them. And let's say I want to, uh, let's say, suggestion. So I would say boathouse, and then, let's see, I will say boathouse, rusty, with the water bucket. So if they have any of them, they must reveal. So it looks like they don't have anything else except for rusty. So what they do is they would secretly show the card if you're playing with more than that many players, you go until someone gives you a clue. If no one has it and you've gone through all eight, you've solved it. Unless your uh, suggestion was based off ones you've already seen. Anyways, so then you record the stuff down. And then you can, if you find the inspector, I'll show you that later. But basically, keep going around the board, finding suspects and keep going around the board making suggestions until eventually you find the inspector and you uh, yeah you find the inspector and you make a final accusation if that's right or if you say the weapon the person and where they are right you win and the inspector is proud of you and they finish the rest of the case but if you get it wrong, you're, you're kicked out of the game and the other people have to try and solve the crime without you. So I need to repeat this thing for me. There are no suspects at the boat Oh yeah, so they made a suggestion, so they're done. So that sound right there, that was a random sound they just played. You see Professor Plus at the stable. Okay, we're gonna search. To search and find Inspector Brown. Okay. So they found are you making a final accusation? So if you are, click yes. And by the way, this last shrub is just for waiting if someone taking a long time. So you think you know the answer? Make your accusation. Okay, so then give your accusation. Okay, so then you'd give your accusation. I'm gonna say Miss Peacock Stable Horseshoe. So that's the who, where, and what. So you reveal it. If you were right, then you click yes. If you were wrong, you click no. It's gonna say were you right. It's gonna say were you right, yes or no, a lot. So we'll click yes. Well done, Fine work. You solved the case in record time. Right, we'll take it from here. So that's how you play. And also some other little notes of the game. I'm going to turn it off now. If you were wrong about the final, once again, the other people get to try and make it without you. And one more thing I need to mention. When you've made a suggestion, so you moved, found some suspects maybe, made a suggestion, you click done after. So that turn ends and the other person gets to go. So there are other things like detective notes, but that's basically how you play. So if you have any questions on how to play, just read the instructions or comment it down below and I will tell you exactly what you need to know based off, based off your questions. 
Okay, also, there are multiple things in this game. There's this, winning, if you win the game. Okay. So, when recording the cards that you have seen, write down the initials of the player, same thing, and keep track of the inspector's movements. Remember, you need to find him when you get him. I never did this usually, but it's fine. If another player moves to a location with a lot of suspects that you need to see, try to go there before they leave. Yeah, I did that too in my games. So yeah, and then you've got troubleshooting. If a problem occurs, remove all pawns from the game board and slide the on-off switch to off and back on. Storage, make sure the on-off switch is in the off position. Remove the two-door mansion from the plastic base. Shut down. The game will shut down after 15 minutes if unused. If you missed what was said, press the shrub mark to repeat. If an opponent is taking too much time on his, her, his or her turn, click wait each. If you take more than 15 minutes, the game will just shut it down and you won't be able to play that one anymore. This player, oh. Okay. So yes, once again, I was right. In the... Let me see. Oh, here it is. Suspects and in, in, inspectors movements. It says in between each player's turn, one or possibly two suspects, and maybe the inspector will be moved electronically by the game to new locations. The suspects will move one space in either direction to a location adjacent to the one they departed. And that's how you play Clue FX. And that was how to play Clue FX. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified for every video we make. And make sure to share this video if you think it's worthy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!